Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Anna and today we'll be talking about my Inkpro audiobooks. Let's get going. So my first book was The Shattered City by Lisa Maxwell. This is the fourth and final book in the Last Magician series. So basically we're flying by Esther who had believed that she could change the fate of magic by, the, by traveling to a past and stop the magician from destroying a mystical book that held the key by freeing her people from the brink and the energy bearer that traps all mangas who cross it. And then she's like basically being hunted by the ancient evil as well as Heart who has to race against time and, and race through time and across the car to direct down a powerful artifacts that they need to buy the books. The books like they missing power to get so so yeah, this was kind of a mess. I gave it like 3 stars, uh, 3.5 stars. It wasn't that bad. But like, it's kind of on me because I haven't read the last three books in a while. So it was, those three books I read was so long ago. So I would actually, you know, just forget things, how things were going and all that. So that's on me. And there was actually a lot of repetition in this book, like Esther getting kidnapped and then escaping. The other characters are also falling into like a lot of traps and then just basically repeat the same thing. They get trapped and then escape and repeat. So that was kind of annoying. And then this book was also like way too long. I don't think it was necessary for it to be too long. So like half the time it was just dragging just to get to the point. It was also really annoying. And like the author really honestly could have cut it down the pages by at least 400 pages. So it was just no point in like, in like being this long at all. And in all honesty, if she cuts down so many pages, it wouldn't change the story as well. There is a spoiler, but I don't want to spoil it, so I'm just going to skip over it. Like there was also like a really big deal about Esther's powers, but they didn't do it in the end. So like, what's the point of making it such a big deal about that point of Esther's powers just not to do it? I hate when authors do that, like, just stop making a big deal if you're not gonna do it in the end. Just take that out or whatever you want to do with it. So, uh, but I did enjoy the ending. I thought it was like really satisfying and I thought it wrapped up as to what it needed to be wrapped up. And also, I did also slightly find it confusing because the rules of like the time travel kept changing a lot. So I wasn't really sure what to follow it up because the rules just kept changing. Yeah, so I didn't really have too much to talk about the Shadowed City. I thought it was okay, it wasn't that bad, but I just wish there was a lot of repetitiveness in this book as well. So my next audiobook is The Left Hand and Booksellers of London by Goth Nix. And we're following, so we're following Susan, who is supposed to be like this heroine of this book, but she has never met her father, but she wants to. She then goes to London, where after a night of like violence and supernatural events that were happening, she discovers that there was a, like a whole other world that exists along, alongside the everyday one. So basically the everyday meaning the normal. This is like a more magic, legend, and mysterious, and booksellers. So I give it three stars. It wasn't bad. It was really interesting, and and I was really d got a little bit confused with the aunt and uncles and who was being related to the main character Susan. I did like the whole magic part of like statues with the earth gods and the earth magic as well as with English mythology. So I thought that was really cool. I did like Merlin, but I was still I was still reminded him of Merlin from King Arthur, so that was fun. But I don't think having the cauldron aspect, there's like this whole event with the cauldron happening in the book, so I didn't really think it was necessary. I just think it just took out more easy parts of the book, and so honestly, so I never really liked Susan. I thought she was like a bit of a brat. But, I mean, like, the characters were okay. I also really liked Merlin. I thought he was, like, the best character of the books. So I really didn't like him. 
Uh, and I also had like the ending was revealed. I think the way how everything was revealed was really nice. And like yeah, it did kind of got slow at the beginning, but it did eventually pick up leading to that event, like the ending. So I thought that was really nice, and I I really did like this book. And like as I said, I liked the magic system and all that. So I thought it was like a really fun read. And my next one was The Hunting Party by Lucy Foley. I did not finish this book, so I did enough at 42% and I gave it a 2 stars. So basically we are following a, like a group of families who are going in a remote location in Scottish Highlands. And then a blizzard came along, which kind of made them be trapped in that location. And, and on top of that, there's a murder going around and killing people. So, so then we have a captain named Emma, and, she, and it's kind of hard to, to host like an annual New Year's party. Mm -hmm. But then this is where things go wrong, and things are about to happen on New Year's Eve. So actually, I think I read The Paris Apartment from Lucy Foley. I think that was another book. I didn't like that book at all, so I think in this might be the time I have to pop my ways from Lucy but uh, basically I did like this book it was too slow and it wasn't engaging enough for me to continue there were too many unnecessary characters it was so much hard for me to follow up and the rest of them and like none of them were pleasant they were just really getting on my nerves and they basically had no morals for themselves so that's fun so I, I did like the setting, which was an isolated estate at the Scottish Highlands. However, the book was just slow, even though it did start out like really strong, but it felt flat afterwards. I didn't really care as to who was the killer at this point. I was just so bored with the book. So, and then there, there really wasn't that much depth to either situations. And I kind of had to, like, kind of had a hard time keeping up with everything that had been happening. Specifically, with the dual timeline, there was a dual timeline, past and present. So one of them was like in the past, we're following what is happening, and then in the present, we're like, we're like, the characters are trying to figure out the clues and all that stuff. So. That's from my understanding. I could be totally wrong, but why not? So, although... And I was also going back with the characters. I did kind of like Henda and Dong. And Dong. So, they were kind of alright. And maybe having like a pop from only Dong still would have been better. And, you know, just more bearable. Uh, there were also some chapters that were like sluggish. And I just didn't really care for those other chapters. I really did like Heather chapters. I really wish the author had focused more on Heather instead of the other people who had no value to the story in all honesty. But maybe just, that's just me. But um, yeah, regardless, um, this, I just didn't really like this book. It just wasn't really interesting for me enough to finish. And I, and I also felt like some book, some of the chapters were a bit clunky, they didn't really have that nice flow. It was just dick, 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 you know, kind of thing. And they didn't have that smooth flow. So that, that was kind of depressing. And my next book is Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. And we're following under the streets of London as a world most people could never dream of. A city of monsters and saints, murderers and angels. Nice and armor and pale girls in black velvet. Neverwhere never is like the Lana of the people who have fallen between cracks. And we're following Richard, who's kind of naive and dumb at times. So like, he also gets sucked into this whole mess and is trying to figure out what is happening and why is he here. And I also DNF this book. Uh, I left it at 56%. It's a 2.5. So yeah, I know I like it. It was just no. So I don't really have a lot to say about this myth because I literally finished at the halfway point. I think it would have been better for Virgin to be like an actual adult instead of a childish 
and mature person, I think the story would have been much better. I do love the adventures and what they had to go through. I really liked how they had to find angels and adventures was like in disbelief, like yeah, right, we're not gonna find angels kind of thing. So I kind of did like that part, but it was just going so slow and I was just really bored with it. And and sometimes it does seem obvious and so. I just wasn't really interested in like the characters who are also really bored. And I don't know, I'm not, I'm not really sure how to feel about the writing style. I don't know if it's just me or I'm not used to Neil Gaiman because this is actually my first book of Neil Gaiman. So I, it could be just me, I don't know, but the writing style was also just really meh. And then there's also like really a lot of multiple paths that were just a little bit everywhere here and there so that also put me off and I also had a hard time keeping up as to who we're following. But um, yeah, so those are my thoughts. Again, I don't have too much to say because I didn't think in, I think enough this book. So yeah. I might read The Ocean and the Graveyard. Those two kind of sound interesting but I'm not sure so. You'll see. My next book I finished, uh, I gave it a two star, so this is Nothing But Black and Thief by Cassandra Cars. It's like a gorgeously like a creepy house haunted tale. And then there's like actually steeped in Japanese folklore and full of devastating twists. I get, as I said before, I gave it two stars. Um, I think there was still could have been a lot of horror in this book. Also, also, I didn't really understand the beef between the friends because they also had some beef going on, which never really explained. I thought there was also too many metaphors that were in the book as well. Like, like some of them didn't really, didn't really make sense and some of them weren't really necessary as well. And I get, I just didn't really like the characters. I also thought they were too cliches. Like, I don't really blame the author just because horror can also get too cliche if you have like the same plot over and over again but with different characters and all that but I do think some of them I just already seen in other horror books so which is unfortunate but I was just in the mood to read something horror so that's why I picked this one up so yeah I also didn't really feel like there was enough high stakes in the story I thought it was kind of low but not by too much and I actually thought the creature that was involved in this book wasn't that bad, but it could have been definitely been a little bit more developed because I thought the creature was really interesting, so I wish she had time to like, you know, just to develop more and give more depth to the creature. So yeah, so again, I don't have too much to say about this book. I just, I wish there was more horror. I didn't like the characters. I kind of feel the dynamic. I didn't like the main character as well. So, yeah, it's just pretty much your stand on horror, in all honesty, but, um, yeah. Okay, so I, I do have two more, and then it's The Day by Alma Katsu. So we're following two timelines where we have Annie Henley, who is like a student serving the wealthiest people on board the Titanic in 1912. So Annie is like fortunate enough to survive the great tragedy of Titanic that we know. And then mm -hmm. basically for her escape days four years later on the Britannic, which had been refitted as hospital during the World War II. So now Annie spent the intervening four years in an like in, in a Liverpool asylum, discovered that she has like some nasty demons, both real, both real and imagined. So I do love reading about Titanic. I think that that is an amazing ship. I love Titanic, so that's why I'm picking up. Um, I gave it three point five stars. I don't think it was bad, but I think it was pretty good. And you know, it's just that I like the story of Titanic, and I love and Titanic is my favorite ship. And I loved everything about Titanic. I love to read everything about it. So I did think there was too many similarities between the actual Titanic movie, and so. But the story, but well, the story also took present at the Botanic, which was cool, so I didn't like that part. I liked the ghost aspect of it, like the paranormal unexplained events that kept happening throughout the book. I didn't like Annie, I thought she was a bad character, and the only one that really drew me in, the other characters were not so much. 
but I thought this book was a little bit slow, but I did like how there were historical events that were in the book. I thought they were blended in nicely with the fictional uh, of the book. Uh, and there were also some really famous account peoples in this book, like John Jacob, David Dane Bowen, and we had like Aston with his pregnant wife Madeline, and Leslie Williams, but they didn't really have that much impact on the story. I, I kind of wish that they did. But um, yeah, so, but like overall, I did wish they only utilized more of the demons and the mermaids. Because that part, of the, that part of the story also sounded really cool, so I thought she had to utilize them more in the book. And I'm also going to include my physical TV on it because only even one book. I'm still reading The Secret History, but I think I'm also going to DNF it just because I just can't finish it. The pages are just too long and I keep being distracted. I think the characters are honestly boring and there's some things that just like keep being repeating and repeating all over again and they were, it's just not really necessary to have long pages so I might DNF the book. But my book that I did read is Daughters of the Dawn by Sir Salina and Sasha Nanua and this is a sequel to Sisters of the Snake where in the following Lydia Rani who is in trouble again they have to find a mother before she becomes all too powerful she sends the world into darkness and we're basically having meeting new friends we have more magic and things like that I gave it a 3 for 5, I don't think that was that bad, but I'm not sure if I had, like, I did still think it had potential, but it did feel flat. I didn't really love the triangle, it was annoying. It was like Duna, Vodrani, and Amiya, and then we had Rhea and Sai, something like that, so. I did really love the Masters Origins, wasn't sh so rushed. Um, okay. They shouldn't have been rushed because we're just getting to know all these masters. And I just really liked the story, I thought it was really cool. And I love learn how we learn more about the origins. I loved the lore in the astrology, I wish we had more of it. It was interesting in the beginning, I did love more of Rani's peel than Rhea's. But towards the end, I would kind of like Leah's Paul more than Lani because it was just more interesting. The ending was also predictable because of what happened to Leah. I knew she was going to pretend to do something with the Snake Master. I'm not going to see what it is. But she also did something which I find it predictable as well. Also, I wish there was a map in the book just because some of the places of how they were traveling sounded a bit too confusing and I couldn't really quite picture it. I kind of had an idea but like it was still confusing and I just didn't really know where they were going so I wish there was a map of the whole land and you know I just didn't know how long the journey from palace to palace was. Um, but yeah I think like the final battle with the snake rest of that a little flat. I wasn't, I wasn't really expecting like wow look at that. But I wish there was something more to it. It just felt flat and kind of easy, I would say. But it, it just didn't have an intense thing to the battle. But I did like how Amara's story ended. It was sad, yeah, but I think it was well done. So I really like how Amara was put to rest. So. Those are all the audiobooks I have read in April. Let me know what you have read. So please like, comment, and subscribe so that you'll be notified every time I post. And I'll see you on my next one. Bye!